Hello, Curran here. This video is all about setting up a sort of a blank canvas with which you can start working that responds to the width and height of the window that you're working in. So no more hard-coded width and height. I'm going to start by forking this face example, which by now I'm sick and tired of forking this. I just want a clean slate to start from. And I'll rename it to say blank canvas. This is partly inspired by a new feature of VizHub where you can set the height by clicking set height right here. And you can change the default height from 500 to something else, say 800. And see, now your canvas changes size. And the goal here is to make it so that you don't have width and height set here, you know, hard coded to these numbers, but rather your code takes the width and height from the window that it's in, or the frame, the iframe that it's in. So I'll start by clearing out this old readme, and also in index.js, I'm going to delete pretty much everything here, except for our starter code with the SVG element. We're going to be deriving the width and height from the window that we're in. So in order to see what the width and height is, I'm just going to append a rectangle just so we can see the width and height really clearly. So I'll say svg.append rect.ettr width, and we'll set that to be width, our variable. And the same thing for height. And I'm going to round the corners a little bit, just so we can tell th that the corners match up with the corners that we want. We can say .attr rx say uh, 40. Oops, I misspelled ATTR. There we go. Now we've got some rounded corners. So we can see that now that I've changed the height, our hard-coded height here doesn't match the height of our uh, sort of blank canvas. So let's address that. In index.html, I'm going to get rid of this hard-coded width and height on our SVG. And over in index.js. One reliable way that I've found to get the width and height is to use client width and client height on the body element. But in order for that to work, the body needs to be sort of stretched like a canvas across the whole screen. And the way that we can do this is we can say position of the body is fixed and left, right, top, and bottom are all set to zero. And we don't need the margin in this case. Now, over in index.js, we can access document.body.client.width. And I'm just going to console.log that to see what it is. That's interesting. It's 944. I would have expected it to be 960. Maybe we do need margin as 0 here. Now it's 960. All right, that was it. See, 960 is the width of the iframe in VizHub, and it's also the width of the iframe in blocks.org. But if you were to export this and run this externally, the width of the browser window that you're viewing with would be printed out here instead of 960. Back in index.js, Let's do the same for client height. We can say console.log document.body.client height. See, it's 800. That's the width that I set. Now what we can do here is, instead of extracting the width from our SVG element, we can just use document.body.clientWidth. And for height, we can use document.body.clientHeight. And I'll get rid of these console.logs. And now we're seeing the default width and height of our SVG element. So we need to set the width and height attributes of our SVG element based on the client width and client height. So we can say dot ATTR of the SVG. We set the width to be width, our variable, and height as well. Now if we see the size of this, um, you can see that it, it actually fills up the size available. 
And if we set the height again to say 700, it will change size here. All right, that's it for our blank canvas.